today I'm going to give you a brief tutorial on how to get started using your Juki 350 QVP long arm quilting machine. from Pure Joy Farms and I'm going to be doing a little bit different video than normal today. So today I'd like to show you how to set up a Juki 350 QVP long arm quilting machine. Um, I recently purchased this machine about a month ago so I'm brand new to this. The reason I want to do this video is because when I was initially trying to get started on the machine I went to YouTube and I tried to find a video that would help me understand the manual because even the manual was not answering all my questions, but I couldn't find a video that would help me. So I thought, what better than for me to create a video so that others like you, others like me, can have a resource to help you get started. Like I said, this is the Juki 350 QVP. There are a few different sizes to this same model with the same machine set up on top. Um, I happen to have the 10 foot wide um, I'm not even sure if that's the right word, I'm so new to this, but, um, so when I bought the machine, the shop that I bought it from here locally in Fergus Falls was really great. They came out, got it all set up for me. Um, they put the whole machine together. It took several hours for them to get it all put together. They leveled it and then made sure that everything was functioning right. And then, um, another person from the shop came out and gave me an hour and a half lesson on how to use the machine, which was super helpful. Um, and so I would highly recommend that if you're looking at getting a machine like this, try to find a shop who will have somebody come out and set it up for you. It does come in many large boxes. Um, so I was very thankful that I didn't have to put all of the pieces together. and. It was nice to be able to trust somebody to do that part who's done it before. So you'll see that I have the lead cloth set up on here for the backing. Um, this is a lead cloth for the, for the one edge and then the other lead is connected down here. Um, these are pinned on from the center point of the lead cloth, the center point of my backing, match those up and then pinned it on along this dotted line. Uh, that's, so that's the first step when you get started. Um, there are various types of lead cloths and lead styles out there. Um, this is just hap this happens to be the brand that um, our local shop used, and so I just am starting with that. I might change my mind someday, but this seemed like the simplest way to get started. Um, and then you'll also notice that I do not have the leads connected for the other layers of the quilt. I only have the lead cloths attached for the backing. It's attached up here and then down um, inside this roll. Um, the way that I was shown was to have the top free floating. So you can see that my top is just hanging down there. And as long as you're paying attention and making sure that everything is laying straight, that uh, seems to be a good way for me to, to go. Um, maybe at some point I'll change my mind, but so far I haven't had any issues. Um, so now I'm going to move on to show you how to thread the machine. Okay, so one of the main things I wanted to show you because I was very confused looking in the manual is how to thread the machine. This piece up here is um, actually spins on here. You can see that. Um, and I'm not sure how every um, system comes, if they all come with this same system up here but there's all these little hooks and they some of them are different colors so in the manual it was not clear which colors face which direction the way that I have figured out how this works the best is to have the red in the front facing the front of the machine and then the yellows in the back um, so you've got red and then blue and then green and then yellow and the reason I like this setup is that um, that I can have both thread for the, the top thread threaded at the same time that I can have the thread for the bobbin threaded so that I don't have to break the thread, re-thread the machine when I run out of a bobbin. So I'm just gonna show you 
how I get that set up here. And working so I'm gonna um, take these down and then rewind them or re-thread them so you can see how I do that. I don't know the technical names of any parts of the machine, so you'll have to forgive me for that. So first of all, I bring the thread up. I start in the, the loop to your right from if you're at the back of the machine, and then I thread it through the left one. In the manual, it only shows you to go through the top hole here. Um, the technician who showed me had me go through the top, starting in the back, and then go through the front, and then come back again, and go through the bottom hole to the front again. So then there's no uh, whipping around or there's no chance of that spinning on you. Okay, so after you get it through both sets up there, you're gonna come through the top hole. You go over the top between those two discs. Uh, you're gonna go down through that hole. You're gonna come between these two discs and then around. You're gonna make sure it kind of snaps so that you're able to grab that flexible black lever. And then you go underneath this big metal piece. You're gonna come back. You're going to hook inside this little hook there. Now we're gonna go through from the back, that, through that hole. We're gonna go through this hook right here. And final step before you thread your needle is to go through that little hole. There, I'm sorry, one more step. Um, there is a little hole on this on the side here. That is tricky. So you can see why uh, this is definitely sl would slow you down if you had to re-thread this every single time your bobbin ran out. So I think it would be advantageous to be able to leave that threaded while you rewind up your bobbin thread. You're gonna lay it across the top similar to what you did for the top thread. You start on the, the loop on the right and then have it rest in the, the loop on the left. We come up here, we're going to feed it through the hole and then loop it around that little screw there. So it's just gonna, it should be able to just um, smoothly pull. And then Starting on the back side, you're going to wind it around clockwise. Your bobbin to get it started. And you see, I'm using a half filled bobbin. I wouldn't normally do this, it's just for demo purposes. And then it's pretty easy. All you do is you just slide that forward, and it's going to take off and it's going to start to fill. When it's filled enough, it's going to release that, pull this up, and then you can use your cutter right there and take your bobbin refill your machine the front stays threaded wow uh, one more thing that I want to show you on the computer screen up front this is what is called the main menu from here you can select the different stitches I always have been quilting on the precise mode except for of course when I'm basting around the edges to get started this is to change your stitches per inch. I've left mine set at 10. Needle up, needle down. Pretty straightforward there. Um, you can set it up so that it automatically cuts your thread. I don't have it set up on auto. I manually cut the thread when I'm ready for it to be cut. And then you have a bobbin sign there. I'm gonna show you what we've figured out there. If it's gonna let me go in there. 
we go. So it is kind of nice to know where you're at in your bobbin, especially if you walk away from your project and you come back and you don't remember how much is left on your bobbin. I did a little bit of playing around with this number at the top, yards on full bobbin, and determined that my bobbin, uh, for the type of thread that I was using, held 81-ish yards of, of thread. So that's where I've set it, and then I know, um, or I'm sorry, when I have a full bobbin, I go into the bobbin menu and then I move this up to 100% and then reset it so that the number adjusts as I start to sew. So I know where I'm at on my bobbin and it helps me plan for when I need to refill. I do usually fill up at least two bobbins every time I wind one, just so that I have a spare ready to go. Well, thanks for watching today. I hope that brief introduction was helpful for you to get your machine set up. I also want to say that I'm having a lot of fun with my Juki. I have quilted on a standard machine for over 20 years and have considered buying a long arm machine, but I've always talked myself out of it, um, thinking that I wasn't quite ready. But I have no buyer's remorse. I'm very, very pleased with the purchase. It does take a little bit of time getting used to driving the machine versus pushing the fabric around. However, it is much easier on my neck, um, my upper body. Um, it is much more comfortable to use and it reduces the amount of time uh, it takes to quilt a quilt for many. It's at least twice as fast. I would, I would say that it's maybe even four times as fast and I'm brand new to this. So um, I'm looking forward to learning new stitches. I don't think I intend to do any quilting tutorials down the road, but we'll see where life takes us. Thanks for watching.